All right. I got projects and projects and projects. Uh, in the middle of doing everything. Um, next project is going to be my Dan 35. Uh, rebuild, upgrade, all that good stuff. A lot of people are going to say, Oh, why are you pouring money into a 35? They suck. Well, they kind of do, sure, if you wield them hard. But um, if you're careful with them, you can get some good uh, use out of them. They're kind of small, but they'll do the job. The only thing I'm not going to do is chromoly axle shafts. And, well, if I break my old ones, then I'll get some decent ones. But I'm not going to blow money on something I don't need just yet. I'm only going up to 33s, and they're going to be 10 and a half. So, all right. As you can see, there's a, a little bit of play, in and out movement, and all that stuff. My uh, my rear shot. If you've been watching my videos, my Dana 30 front was also doing this a lot worse. So I'm going to tear this whole thing apart, put all new bearings in there. I got an Eaton E locker that's going to go in there, so I'm going to lock the rear. Nice electrical selectable locker. So all I got to do is run a wire. No cables, no airlines, none of that crap. It's a three pin design. They're pretty good. Um, what else, what else? Oh, I'm also re-gearing. Since I'm getting 33s, I want to help my engine out a little bit and going up to, uh, 456 gears. So, at 4.56, whatever you'd like to call them. So, uh, I might show part of the front re-gearing, I don't know. But, for now, let's tear this fucking thing apart. I'm going to take this. Alright. This is what you get in the new Larker box. So, Here's the beautiful uh, locker, in all its glory. Here's the, uh, the electrical pigtail that comes off of it, and uh, the spinning freewheeling stator thing. You got this big old access hole here. So if you do have C-clips, um, I'm pretty sure what you got to do is take out that Allen key and remove this box. And um, then the center pin should slide out. I'm pretty sure, because I don't see anything else that holds the pin on. Unless it's this thing. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. I don't really care too much, but... Yeah, you would take that center pin out, and then you should be able to get to the C-clips. You'll have an access hole. It's a big old hole. So if you're worried about it, um, there is definitely provisions. This is only a three-pinion design, so that you can get your, uh, your clips in there. Uh, if you check the instructions, it gives you a big old stop. Uh, warning for all Dana 30 and 35 uh, e-lockers. You have to order uh, special bearings and races, so if you do decide to buy um, new bearings and all that, don't buy stock 35 carrier bearings and races, because they won't fit. And they give you the, uh, the numbers right there. These are uh, 10 king bearing and races. And they look kind of like this. You have your 10 29 11s and your 10 29 49s. And they're just uh, bearings and races. So they'll fit on there. Also, um, don't put the bearings and races on yet, as they also tell you, um, that you have to do some disassembly first. There is a double coil wound uh, spring clip right up here. And you're going to have to take that clip out to remove this whole uh, spinning assembly. Because if you notice, these notches stick out farther than the, the case. So you won't be able to get your ring gear on unless you remove this. So don't put your bearings on and then find out, oh fuck, i got to take the bearings off and take that off to put the carrier on. Or the, the ring gear on. So, just a heads up. And you also get a, a wiring harness. Comes with a nice uh, beefy switch. Comes with a pigtail harness. And a connector to the other side of that. Uh, you got a little tiny relay. And all that good stuff. And you got a bunch of this crap to make it look nice. And some stickers and other strange things. Little metal stuff. Pretty neat. Okay. Alright, for now I'm going to move on to the carrier. So here's the uh, Eaton E locker. Um, you're going to have a double wound snap ring that sits uh, in this groove right here. Here it is. It's uh, a pain in the ass. But the way that I got it, I used a flathead underneath the bottom to hold it steady. And then I use this guy to get under there and then just work my way around it. And you just go around in a circle once or twice and pop it off. It's a pain, but if you use that flathead, it'll stop it spinning. And you can get under it with something like that. It's a pain. Okay, once that's done, just sit here and wiggle this guy. And this comes off. Yum. 
guess I shouldn't really mess with any of that. That looks like grease or something. So, <clears throat> put that in a safe uh, place. That looks good. And now, you can put your ring gear on. Because the, uh, the anti-rotation tabs were in the way before, so you can just slide it on there. Make sure your uh, ring gear is clean. I'm going to clean, clean it with brake clean. And uh, check to make sure it's flat. If you're using used gears, it's a lot more important to make sure that the uh, both surfaces are flat. You want to make sure that they lay together properly. And um, I also got some new bolts. You can get your order 20 of them because I'm doing the front too. Or just, you know, bolts. Okay. Uh, with everything off that, you can slide your ring gear on. Now I just have mine being held in with two bolts. What you're going to do is put Loctite on uh, all the bolts. Put them in there. And you're going to tighten them up in uh, like a circle. First get them all decently tight and then tighten them in a circle until you're uh, finally on there. Because this is a press fit. So uh, you're going to use the bolts to draw the, uh, the ring gear onto the, uh, the carrier. So, that'll be fun. Alright, there you go. That's all that on there. For me to get this just right, I had to take my little 3 8 inch, uh, 11 16 socket. It's weird because an 11 16 is loose and a 17 is too tight. So it just, I don't know, it's weird. But these cutouts that the Eat Me Locker gives, they're not super wide. So you're not going to be able to fit most half inch or even box end wrench um, sockets in there or anything like that. So I'd use my little 3 8 and I just used this tiny little uh, impact gun. Just work your way in a circle. If you do it like that, it'll make this real quick. Just put some Loctite on everything. Just until, it's, until they're not moving anymore. Then you got to torque them. Uh, I torqued mine to 55 foot-pounds. So I got this nice little torque wrench here. And this big-ass flat blade. Anything you can find. I just kind of stuck the screwdriver in here. Between here and here. Made sure it wasn't resting on any of the spider gears or anything important. I just had it on the outside of the housing and tried to make sure it was as flush as possible because I don't know what else you could possibly use to uh, hold that carrier in place because that's a slippery son of a bitch. That thing just turns all around. So, yeah, have fun trying to torque that. Okay, so now that the ring gear is on there and tight and all that good shit, you can put your stator back on, you can put your double round snap ring back on, and you can press your carrier bearings on. Uh, for my setup, my carrier shims go on the outside of the bearings. So the bearings go on and the shims go on the outside. Now on my old setup I couldn't find any shims. I took one of the bearings off just to see and there's definitely no shims under there. All I got is, you know, the old, uh, all that old stuff. And then there's this big old plate. So I guess maybe the shims would go between this plate and the, the race. I don't know. Unless these themselves are shims, in which case I have no idea what the fuck I would do if I had to change black, uh, backlash. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to go press the bearings on for that too. And we'll see how that goes. There we go. Okay, now the fun part, drilling holes. So, right here you have your uh, your wire harness right here and your rubber grommet. The rubber grommet uh, is where you're going to want the hole to be. Um, my anti-rotation tabs don't do a great job. They still bounce around quite a bit. I tried installing it the other way and it doesn't fit. So this is the only way it goes in. I don't know if I should make spacers or just leave it as is. I don't want the wire to be holding that in place though. But um, try to keep that in mind. Remember that when you do drill the hole, it's not going to be sitting like this. It'll be sitting up higher and through the hole like that. So try to take off a little bit, depending on where you're going to put your, uh, your stuff at. So I think I'm going to install it somewhere between these two holes, probably a little closer to this side. Um, and just far enough back to make it over this ridge. So that's my supposed hole. Take all the dirt and clean it all up. You don't want to get a bunch of dirt in there. 
but I would recommend doing this before you decide to do your final clean out just so you can get the metal shavings out but I'm gonna put it there just keep in mind uh, a few things how this wire is actually gonna sit make sure you have the length that you need uh, this grommet does move up and down the uh, the wires a little bit so that's not a total issue probably put a little RTV in there or something <laughs> so I got the final mark you don't want to be stretching this too far and uh, you also want to make sure this sleeve is not rubbing against your carrier. So when this thing is spinning, you don't want your wire to be sitting like that because that'll eat it right up. So hopefully, with the spot that I picked, it'll have enough length and everything will sit nicely. You only want to drill this hole once, believe me. It's a big fucking hole. There's not a really easy way to fix it either. So make sure you got it right the first time. I might even move it over to the right a little bit. I don't know. Alright. I'll try that and see how that goes. <laughs> Your final hole diameter should be a uh, half inch. So I'm going to work my, up, my, my way up to that point. Okay, so obviously you're going to take the carrier out, work your way up, use a punch to, uh, to mark the, the hole so that your drill bit doesn't wobble initially, then just work your way up. Uh, and a half inch hole fits perfectly, slides in there. If you want to go the extra mile, you could put a dab of uh, RTV in between the little grooves before you push it in. And that'll definitely seal it up. Maybe something up here, I don't know. But uh, these wires can go in and out. Uh, and I got mine to about where I like them. So that's where it sits. If you notice, there's plenty of gap here now that it's pulled up there. And uh, the rotation tabs. It bends a little when it goes up, but when it goes down, it's not super tight. There's a little bit of looseness because I want to keep as much tension off here as possible. Because with this bouncing back and forth, if this bends back and forth too much, eventually it'll break. If that breaks and your locker won't activate, and that would really suck. So, I don't know. That's what I got right now. So, that should be pretty good. And also, if you move the locker back and forth, you notice it doesn't really roll that much. It is on a bearing and it is really loose, so for the most part, you should be okay. I don't know. But, that's what we're looking at, so there you go. And then you can put your connector up here. Uh, so now is the final cleaning. So take some brake clean. Take everything out that you can. You can leave the race center or whatever. Spray everything out. Alright, so for the, uh, the last step underneath for the, uh, the e-locker. Uh, now that you got your gear set up and you like the way uh, your pattern sits and all that good stuff. Um, you're going to slip this little guy through. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of um, this gear oil RTV gasket maker and sealant. Uh, this guy right here. So I'm just I'm gonna put a little bit around these rings just so that it's uh, got a little bit more of uh, something going on there. So stick that through there, and then you can put the butt connector on and start running your um, your wiring harness. So let's do that. All right, with the plug on place, uh, I'm not sure how to tighten the uh, the leads into the harness just yet, so they're kind of just floating around. Uh, you bring your black black wires up to your relay. Now if you pay attention, one of them has a black and red stripe. And on the relay side, there's also one with a black and red stripe. Anyway, black and red stripe, black and red stripe, black to black. They're also floating in there. I haven't crimped them down yet, just for testing. Now, uh, our switch is dangling down here. You have uh, a, a ground that's plugged into the switch and the relay, so that's grounded. You have a red wire, which is going to go to positive, and a blue, which is going to go to positive uh, that's switched on with the ignition. But for now, since I don't feel like messing with the ignition, that's also going to positive. So now that'll turn on no matter what. So when you flip your switch, you'll notice a faint red glow. Uh, my battery is almost dead, so that's why it's faint. It'll be a lot brighter in the cab and when it's all set up. So, red wire means it's activated, and it's getting current flowing through the locker. So we set that much up. Now, if you come over here, don't get worried. You'll notice that the pin is still sticking out. All you need is a good rotate. So I'm going to take my hand and rotate the pinion. And once it locks, see that? It goes down that ramp, and boom, you're locked. Now, if you, uh, say, switch gears and go in reverse, that pin is going to ungo, and then go back down the other side of the ramp. And once that tab hits... Bam, locked. So that's how your locker works. Just like that. And then when you flip the switch, that pen will just float there. 
So, we have a properly functioning Eaton E-Locker. Hooray! Now you put the cover on it and fill it with fluid. Good luck! Oh, and we got a wire the wires.